Right, hello there. Good morning. Nice to see you. It's Thursday. It's the 5th of August. Lovely to be here with you today. We've got a um, very exciting show. We've got a, a, a tooth, a what? A tooth? A nail biting show. Um, it's all about the Olympics, right? This is going to be very interesting. We're going to look at language, idioms, vocabulary that you need to talk not only about the Olympics, but a wider range of different sport activities as well. So looking forward to that. To begin, let's get stuck in with a little bit of this. Hello, my friends. It's great to be here and lovely to see you. Um, welcome to today's show or lesson or video. It's um, going live on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, the video is recorded so that you can watch it later. Again, if you want, if you haven't had enough of me. So listen, good to see you. Let's see who's in the house. We've got Kate Paspina. Hello, Kate. Johnny Beck, Katerina, Anuat. Um, Karan, hello. Farida, good morning to you. Um, Shari Full, hello there. And who else? Jax Jacob, nice to see you. Wave of the hand, lovely. Uh, Tan Hung from Vietnam, great to see you here. Harry's there, hello, Harry, morning. Jana Jam, probably pronounced it wrong, forgive me. Um, but lovely people from all over the world. Excellent, nice. Um, Today, right, we're talking about this topic, which is ba -bam, the Olympics. Now, the Olympics um, is an interesting topic because I think we're not going to learn just about the Olympics, but there's a lot of overlap, right? Can't see that. Overlap with other topics, especially in IELTS speaking. So if you get, for example, a part two question about describe a sporting event you've been to or a game you've played or a game you've watched. Games can also be sports. Talking about health, fitness, going to the gym, um, exercise, hobbies, could be a sport. The whole topic of sport is huge. And then the Olympics today will cover lots of that interesting stuff. I've just noticed I've left my Facebook on. Can you hear the bing? It keeps going bing. <laughs> Let me turn that off straight away. Excellent. Um, so let me just check in. Because sometimes people bing me. Bing me. <laughs> Great verb. People bing me when something's going wrong technically that I'm not aware of. But I think we're all very good. AOS says, hello, I'm very apprehensive because I don't know much about Olympics, the Olympics. And that's really good because if you don't know much, this will be a really good lesson because sometimes in IELTS speaking, we have to talk about topics we don't like or we don't know much about. Not everybody is a sports fan, but you need to know the language, at least enough to communicate your ideas, right? So that's what we're going to do today talking about the Olympics. Good. If you're new here, welcome. Have a seat. Get yourself a cup of tea or coffee and get ready for this lesson. Um, to let you know, my name is Keith. If you don't know, um, I have a website called the Keith Speaking Academy. Go and check it out. Lots of useful resources. And also at the end of today's lesson, you can download the, um, the PDF of the lesson notes from the website. Yeah. Also, I'm on Facebook, so if you want to go to the Facebook page, Keith Speaking Academy, or join our Facebook group if you want a bit of motivation to get you the Olympic gold IELTS. Um, come and join us in the Keith, Keith's Mastermind community for IELTS speaking. You can see us on there. Great. Um, now, <laughs> I'm playing games here. By the way, if you're on YouTube, do remember... Of course, subscribe um, so that you can find out or if you press that notification button, you can find out about upcoming videos. I do videos every 
um, every what? Every Saturday there's a recorded video, every Thursday there's a live video. Um, and if you go to my shorts channel, it's a relatively new channel, then you can also get every Tuesday. Um, have I got a picture about shorts? I think I have. There you go. It's called English Speaking Success Shorts, new video every Tuesday. These are just one minute videos to help you learn English and get better with your English, right? Um, excellent. I'm just going to show you very, very briefly um, the website because to let you know what's on there in case you are wondering what's Keith's website all about. Um, if you go and have a look at the website, basically on the home page, you can go and study with me. You can find out about my online courses if you go there. Um, and they'll tell you all about this one, IELTS Speaking Success Get A Band 7 in particular. You can find out about that course here. Um, on the website, there's lots of information about the IELTS Speaking Test. So if you want to find out about the evaluation, the topics, part one, two or three, it's all there. Free live lessons. Oh, by the way, go and download this book as well. Um, are you making these common mistakes in IELTS Speaking? It's well worth getting free live lessons. That's where you are now, right? The free live lessons, basically, you can go there and you can get the latest live lesson. You can watch it, you can read it, study it or download the notes. You can download the audio file at the moment as well if you just want to listen on the go. And then you can go and get all of the old previous lessons on all of your favorite topics. <laughs> Check out the blog as well. The blog has some good stuff all around um, some of the latest videos, topics, complex sentences was very popular last week. A lot of feedback about that, which was great. Excellent. So that's the website. Go and check it out. Talking about feedback. Thanks, um, moderators, for your work and for sharing that. That's great. Just to let people know the, the website address. Talking about feedback, I got an email I wanted to share with you. This was um, last week from Fernando, who said the following. He said, hello, Keith. I hope you're really well. I hope you've rested during your, during your well-deserved time off. Um, I had a few days off the other week. While you were enjoying your holiday, my IELTS exam date finally came. I wish I had bumped into you earlier. Um, in because, or at least with enough time for taking one of your courses. Regrettably, it wasn't possible, but I saw many of your videos and lessons as I could manage. They were invaluable. I think the most important thing for me was when you said you had to be confident with your own knowledge and accept your level. That is so important. Be confident with your own knowledge and accept your level. That was my beacon of hope, says Fernando. And I like your K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. These few words are not enough to express my humble thanks, but I don't want to steal your time either. Uh, Fernando, you said you might be at the next lesson. If you're here, this is you. Thank you very, very much for sharing that. It's a huge motivation for me to see students being successful in their, in their test. But of course, of for you, hopefully, that opens new doors, helps you um, get closer to your life dreams and life goals. So thanks for sharing, Fernando. That's great. OK, so what's going to happen today? Today, this is going to happen. I'm just going to go very briefly through what we're going to do with the Olympics um, so that you know. I'm going to begin looking at some vocabulary. I was trying to get five rings, but I just ended up with balls, <laughs> five balls, different colours. Never mind, not quite the Olympic rings, but not to worry. Um, we're going to look at the role of the Olympics. I mean, why does it exist? Why do we spend so much money on the Olympics? Um, we'll be diving into my toolbox, another tool to help you learn English. And... Of course, we can't visit the Olympics without talking about the Paralympics, the Paralympics, um, which takes place two weeks, takes place after the Olympics for two weeks. Um, and this is for disabled athletes or athletes with impairments to help them 
showcase their skill and their talent from different countries. So we'll be talking about that. It, it's a side of the Olympics that is often not exposed as much as it should be, I think. Um, visualization, I'm back with a visualization for you. It's a way to relax and absorb all of today's language in a very natural way. <laughs> Um, what else? Idioms, of course. We're going to pick out some useful idioms to talk about the Olympics um, and finish on Kahoot, the review, because I like Kahoot and I think a lot of you like Kahoot. Whoa. <laughs> Balls everywhere. Very pertinent for today's topic on the Olympics. OK, so that's where we're beginning. Let me just see if you're all doing OK. I think you're all doing OK. Excellent. Good. Good luck, Uzbeks. Yeah, Uzbek fans doing well, right? I see that China are top of the um, the, the medal table. Um, GB, shout out to Team GB, Great Britain. I think we're fourth. Remarkable. Very good year for us this year. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in a few moments. Let's kick off with vocabulary, right? Vocabulary. Where is my vocabulary? I think it's over here. ta -da. OK, so when talking about the Olympics, one of the most common verbs is to compete, right? To compete. Notice the pronunciation first. The com, the C-O-M, this bit, if I can get it, becomes com, com. It's not com, it's com. It's the reduced schwa sound. And the stress falls on peat. That's why it has the schwa, the kum. To compete. To compete. To compete. I love to compete. Try. I love to compete. Yeah. Notice the two. T. Com. Come. I love to compete. It's almost like you're falling over. I love to compete. <laughs> Great. That's a useful word. Do you know the word family of the verb to compete? So by word family, I mean the noun, the verb, the adjective, the adverb, the family of words related to compete. Do you know? Well, let's find out. I've got a little test for you. Um, try and fill in the gaps below, right, with the word family, with the noun, the verb, the adjective, and another noun. There are different nouns. There were a lot of b -b -b from Italy, b -b -b, the verb, in this adjective. Mm, N is the noun, right? Try and fill it in. Write down, drum, below in the comments or over there, wherever the comments are. And let's see what you've got. Brilliant. Right, interesting. Pani says India has competed, Japan has competed against Japan. Ah, yes. I'll come to that in a moment. That's a really good point. So we've got we've got a few ideas. Let's just share a few. People have said competition. I'm assuming that's the adjective. Kan Liu also says competition. K just clarifying word family is the noun, verb, adjective. Great. Roro says competition, competitive. Mm, not competitive. Uh, Pradeep says competitor, nice. Or as Harvinda says, competitors, if it's the plural. There is the noun that Twan says, competitiveness. But which one do we need here? Ruya says competition. Compete, competitive, competitor. You're almost there, almost Bobafond, yes. <laughs> Dominico says, I get a lot of pleasure from competing. Very good. Excellent. Nice, nice sentence. 
what else have we got? Anybody got the whole sentence? Has anybody actually bothered to write out the whole sentence? Ah, the silverfish. Great. Let's see what you've got. The silverfish says, There were a lot of competitors from Italy competing in this competitive competition. Hooray! Well done. Nice. There's the answer, right? There were a lot of competitors. So the noun, competitors, from Italy competing in this competitive competition. Right? Fantastic. Brilliant. Well done, Silverfish. I think a few others got it right as well. But that's excellent. Well done, all of you, for that. Nice, nice. So just to clarify, we've got compete is the verb. Competitor is the person, right? So you are the competitor in the Olympics. Well, not yet, but maybe not yet. Competition. By the way, if you are an Olympian watching this, learning English, <laughs> welcome. Maybe you are. Competition. Now, notice this stress changes, right? Competition. Say that with me. Competition. An Olympic competition. I'm going to compete in a competition. I'm going to compete in a competition. Right, great. Um, competition can be countable, as I said, right? A competition. So let's just make that clear. Um, I am competing in a competition, right? I'm competing in a competition. It's countable. However, let me just make this a little bit clearer. It can also be uncountable. There is a lot of competition. Um, there's a lot of competition in the in different markets. I mean, competition like business competition, right? Um, or in the field of cloud computing, there's a lot of competition. Um, for example, Microsoft, uh, Google, Alphabet, um, Amazon, all of those, right? There's a lot of competition. That's uncountable. I'm trying to think of a better example, an easier example. There's a lot of competition. Um, in the field of, I mean, it, let's let's put okay. In I can say in gymnastics. I'm just wondering, I don't want you to confuse the countable though, because you could say there are a lot of competitions in gymnastics, but there's a lot of competition. That means there's there's a lot of desire to win, right? Let's my, that might make it easier. Desire to win. That's the, the meaning of competition, right? In that case, right? Competition countable is like a race or a um, a race or a contest. So it has a different a different meaning there. Okay, great. Just got an idea. There's a lot of competition to take people to the moon. Tesla, right? Mr. Musk, um, Virgin Atlantic, Jeff Bezos and Amazon, they're all trying to take people to the moon. There's a lot of competition, desire to be the first and to be the best, right? Okay. And then competitive, stress again on the pair, competitive, right? Um, so you can be a competitive competitor. It's a nice alliteration, right? I'm a competitive competitor. Try it. I'm a competitive competitor. 
Yeah, nice. Very nice. That's it. Now, something just to make clear that somebody pointed out earlier, um, they said India has competed Japan in the Olympics. Olympics. India has competed. Well, there are two things. It means either in Japan, India has competed in Japan in the Olympics, right? Competed in the Olympics. Or India has competed against Japan and many countries in the Olympics, right? So you compete in a competition, but you compete against other people or other teams, countries. Okay, great. So that's the word compete. It's um, it's a hugely important word, right? Good. Let's see. Mean Cat, China is so competitive in this year's Olympics. Fantastic. Very, very good. Yes. In this year's Olympics. This year and every year, I think. Roro says, I'm a competitive competitor. Great. Ashraf, Ashraf as well. Competitive competitor. <laughs> it is a tongue twister. Yeah, Merinas. Merinas says competitive competitor. It's a really good tongue twister to practice, right? Right, now, Pradeep, let's get this right then. So now that we know it's against, we've seen India has competed against Japan, then here we know it's Brazil has competed against Mexico in the Olympics semi-final football match. Excellent. That's it. Thank you, Pradeep. That's a great chance to show everybody how we use it correctly. Nice. Uh, Rashika is showing us workforce is a competitive domain. Yes. So we, competitive good is not only sport. It can be business, uh, work, study, everything. Good. Competed with Japan, Fiona says. Um, more common is to compete against Japan. They compete. You can say competing with Japan. Yes, you can say that. That's right. But I think more common is against because the idea of competing is, you know, you're, you're against. It's one against another. When you say compete with, it sounds more like working together with. Um, so it is used. It is correct. But I think more common and to give that stronger feeling is against, right? <laughs> Come on. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's lovely to see. Thank you very much. Right. Excellent. Good. Jax says, just one final example. India has competed against Germany in hockey and reworked the history Yes, great, great. I'm not sure what you mean by reworked the history. Um, I, I, I think what we would say, I, I think this is what you mean, right? We normally talk about rewriting history. So we've rewritten history or we've changed history because maybe Germany were always stronger, but now India have competed against them and rewritten history. Maybe that's what you mean. I think. Anyway, great. Thank you for sharing. Let's move on because there's lots of vocabulary. We're going to talk about the, the rounds, right? Because, of course, um, you, everyone's talked about the final and the semi-final. So the final is the obviously the last game. Um, the semi-final is just before that. Before the semi-final, you often have the heats um, or qualifying rounds. I mean, these, these really are the same, right? The heats or the qualifying rounds. For example, in the, the men's 100 meters, there were about 30 competitors. Competitors? Now, you can't have 30 competitors running against each other. So they had three or four heats um, with eight in each heat. And then from the heats, 
you got the final. Um, so you don't always have a semi-final. But those are the heats, I guess, because it's to warm up and you're getting hot. Maybe that's why they call them the heats. When we're looking at records, we if you're the fastest in the world, the fastest or the best, maybe it's the fastest, the highest, the longest, sorry, in the Olympics, right? Then it's the Olympic, an Olympic record. Of course, you've got a world record. This is the fastest and the best in the world, of course. So not always the same. And you can have a, a PB, personal best, which is the, the fastest time for you personally. Um, she got her PB in the 100 meters. Normally we say personal best, but I know a lot of athletes and a lot of athletes talk about PB. Oh, I got my PB when I did 100 meters. So if the context is clear, you can say PB. Um, if the context is not clear, you would say personal best. Personal best, right? So records. Good, 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 good. Ah, I was just going to show you this website. Um, if you want to find out more about records that people have, you know, what are the world records? What are the Olympic records? I stumbled across this website. I stumbled across. That's a great expression. <laughs> I stumbled across. Which means I found by chance, right? I came across. It's the same thing. I came across. Um, oh, fun and games. I stumbled across this website. I found it by chance, that means. To stumble literally is to fall. It's like you're walking and you pull, you fall. I stumbled across this website um, and I wanted to share it with you because I thought it was quite interesting. I found a lot of interesting websites, actually. Um, and maybe if, guys, if the moderators could share this one. This is the, um, the Olympic Games records one, right? And if you go there, it's it's the worldathletics.org website. Um, and basically, you can go in, if you look at women's outdoors, you can see the 100 meters. Um, let me take this out a bit. Can I bring it across? Yes. And this was Elaine, Elaine Thompson. Did you see the Elaine Thompson? Did you see Elaine Thompson winning the 100 meters for women? Wow, out of this world. So she got the new Olympic record. Um, by about a meter. You can find when all the latest ones are for different events. They're down here. For men, for example, you probably remember Usain Bolt, right? Back in 2008, that has still not been broken. The 200 meters in 2008 has still not been broken. Usain Bolt, fastest man in the world. So you can just find out all different um, events, like for the high jump, right? We've got Charles Austin, 1996. Seriously? Nobody has jumped higher than Charles Austin since 1996. Absolutely amazing. So quite an interesting website. I just thought I would share that with you. Quite interesting. You find some nice stuff up there. If you're into that kind of trivia, um, you know, interesting trivia all about the Olympics. Excellent. Good. Um, let's see how you're doing. <laughs> Nivo says, I stumbled across your video on YouTube. Lovely. Great. Very, very nice. Hola, Melissa. Great. Stumbled across. <laughs> Katerina, can I share your comment? This is nice. I'm looking forward to your 100, to your 1 million subscribers in this competitive market. It's a world record. Hooray. Almost there. And a big thank you, everybody, for subscribing. It's absolutely mind blowing uh, what's happening. It's grown so fast. I think, yes, within the next few days, I'll probably hit a million. It's not a world record, obviously. Um, there's lots of people with a million, but thank you very much to all of you. Great. 
Okay, so just coming back in very briefly, a few more words. We talk about to qualify, and this is a really important verb as well, right? When you're competing, then you qualify for something, right? So she qualified for the final. Notice the for, <laughs> for becomes f. She qualified for the final. Can you say that? Listen. She qualified for the final. Yes. She was in the heats and she qualified for the final. Yeah. Um, France qualified for the final in hockey, for example. That's not true, but just an example. Now, if you say disqualified, it's, well, it means that you're kicked out. To be disqualified is you're basically you're kicked out for breaking the rules. Um, nowadays, it, it never used to be like this, but nowadays, if you have a false start, do you know a false start? A false start is where everybody in the athletics, in the running, everybody's ready to go. And they say, ready, set, go. But if they say ready, set, and somebody goes too soon, it's a false start. And now, if you have a false start, you're disqualified. One of our British athletes got disqualified, I think it was in the 100 meters or the 200 meters, um, because he had a false start. So unlucky. I mean, it's not unlucky, right? You're a professional. You shouldn't have false starts. But um, it's cruel, right? That they get, they get disqualified for a false start. You can get disqualified for cheating, uh, you know, in boxing. I saw somebody get disqualified. Um, all sorts of reasons. But then you're not allowed to compete. You're, you're kicked out for breaking the rules. A false start is the example, right? <laughs> ah, okay. Kicked out. So because of this, Anastasia, a group of bad boys are quali disqualified for smoking behind. So disqualified, right, is only in a competition. Kicked out from a competition. And that's a brilliant example, Anastasia, because it shows everybody it's only used in certain contexts. Here, you're talking about the school, right? So you're not, you can't say you're disqualified from school. Um, you can be kicked out of school, yes, but disqualified is only for competitions. Brilliant. Thank you for that example. That's lovely. Great. Let's see. Any other examples? Um, so another one here for exams. If you cheat during the exam, you will be disqualified. Yes, in so much as the exams are competitive. Yeah, exams are competitive. They are like competitions. So you can use disqualified for exams. Um, yes, yes, that can be used for exams as well. Okay, but because it's like a competition. Great. I've got a lot of Indian fans today. I notice India qualified for the final in the cricket match. Beautiful prepositions for in. Lovely. Very, very nice. <laughs> Brad Scan, good question. Disqualified and unqualified are not the same, right? Disqualified is you're kicked out of the competition. Kicked out from or of. Kicked out from or of a competition. Unqualified means you do not have the qualification, right? That's a really good point. Equals not having the qualification. So this is more about in work, right? So in order to qualify as a doctor, you have to study for six years, you have to get your your degree, your certificate, and then you're qualified. But you may get a doctor who hasn't done that, but they 
tell everybody, I'm a doctor, I can treat you, but they're unqualified, right? They don't have the certificate to do it. Right? I mean, somebody, they may say, you know, um, they may say to somebody, can you help me? Let me think of an example. Hmm. I'm thinking of something I'm unqualified for. I'm unqualified to, I'm un, I mean, I speak French, but I'm unqualified to speak French, to, to speak French, <laughs> to speak French. Of course I can speak French. I'm unqualified to teach French. So if somebody says, I need a really good French teacher, Keith, can you teach me? I go, no, no, I'm unqualified, right? I, I don't have the qualification to teach you French. I can teach you English. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to be qualified, of course, but in things like medicine, doctors, yes. Right. Good point. Sebastian, hola desde La Coruña. Hola desde Santander. <laughs> right. Brilliant. That's a nice example. Anne, could you come and teach for me? Because I was struggling to get a good example, right? But Anne says, I'm unqualified to fly an aircraft. That is a really nice example. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. I am thinking on my feet. Excellent. Yeah, Jai, I'm unqualified to work in the industry. Similar idea. Very, very nice. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Medals, of course, we, we can't have the Olympics without medals. So we talk about winning a medal, to win a medal, to win a gold medal or a bronze medal or a silver model medal. Gold, silver, bronze, just to make that clear in case you don't know the colours. So the best is the gold medal, then it's the silver medal. And if you're in third place, you get the bronze medal. Um you would then become a medalist, right? We talked about word families. So the noun is a medal. The noun as a person is a medalist. She's an Olympic medalist. So Usain Bolt is an Olympic medalist, right? Um, you can also say she is an Olympian. So somebody who has an Olympic medal, medal, is an Olympian as well. She's an Olympian. We talk about the podium. Now, if you've played Kahoot with me, in Kahoot we have the podium. And on the podium, basically, can I show you the podium? It's where you have bronze. Oh. Bronze goes here, silver goes here, and gold goes up here, right? So it's that kind of box that people sit on. Um, that's the podium. And I can just show you, just to make it really, really clear, because my good old friend Google has pictures, right? You can see this is the podium. So gold, silver, bronze. And we say in English to make it to the podium. So if you're in the final and you get either first, second or third, then you can make it to the podium. So you often hear, do you know, after the race and they interview the winners and they often say the person in bronze place often says, oh, I'm just I'm just so happy to make it to the podium. Right. So even though they didn't get the gold medal, they're just so happy to get bronze. I'm happy to make it to the podium, to make it to the podium, to make it to somewhere means to arrive. I made it to class. I arrived at class. I made it to the airport on time to arrive, right? To make it to the podium. And finally, the medal ceremony, where they give you the gold medal, the silver medal, or the bronze medal. And even the bronze medal is great because you still made it to the podium. Right, that's it. Lots of stuff all about medals and qualifying, right? Okay, excellent. Let me switch just for a moment. What's coming next? I just need to have some 
Barabshi bidu 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 bi bum bum bum. Coffee, muffin, no muffin, no Wi Fi. <clears throat> okay, good. Where are we? What's coming up next? Ah, so we've talked a lot about vocabulary. We've talked about competing. We've talked about um, brain drain. We've talked about competing. We've talked about um, qualifying, the heats, the rounds, the final, or being disqualified. Um, we've talked all about the medals and getting onto the podium. I think what's important in the Olympics, of course, is the different sports. What are the different kinds of sports, right? Well, let me ask you a question then. First of all, to begin, let me ask you guys, what is your favourite sport? I mean Olympic sport. Because the Olympics, right, you've now got lots of very interesting sports um, since... In fact, since London, Rio, London, Beijing, Beijing, London, Rio, I think all of those have had new sports come in to the Olympics. But the other day, right, I discovered BMX and skateboarding are Olympic sports. What? I had no idea about that. There's lots of new Olympic sports. It's getting very interesting. So my question for you to begin is, what is your favourite Olympic sport. Let's have a look. Let's find out. Okay, DR says football. Great. Hockey. Lovely. Archery. Nice. Swimming. Running race. Right. Okay. I'm going to help a little bit because we wouldn't say running race, although I understand, Jesse. Running, um, we would tend to say... Or one of these. I'm just going to change your answer. Just to bear with me a minute. So I think running races, we would... Oh, it didn't save it. Oh, yes, it has. We would just say running, right? Running as the sport or athletics, if you want to be be wider. Track races we can talk about. Um, there are different kinds of running races. There's sprints, there's middle distance, there's long distance, right? So we can talk about running. And it, it's one of the big ones, right? We've got sprints. You've got middle distance. And long distance. So middle distance is your kind of your 800, 1500, maybe 3000. And that's more of a, a long distance. Long distance is definitely your 5000, 10,000. And the marathon, of course. So those are more long distance. Great. Just to clarify. Thank you, Jesse. Lovely. Cricket, you see, I wasn't aware cricket was a, a, an Olympic sport. We've got Fiona says ice skating, swimming, the long jump. Yeah, long jump is a nice one, right? Um, badmen badminton, 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 <laughs> badminton. Let me uh, write that up here. Maudori, badminton. Badminton. Yeah, good one. Okay, Guarav has got badminton. Lots of people. Teresia loves badminton. Cycling. Wow, did you see? I was watching Denmark against Italy the other day on the pursuit, the cycling pursuit, the team cycling pursuit, where they go round and round. And right at the last minute, Italy snatched the gold medal out of the hands of Denmark. It was Nail biting. <laughs> it was a real nail biting final. <laughs> Love it. Nail biting final. Well done, Italy, right, for winning that. They did really well in the cycling. Football. Lots of people like football. Wow, Johnny Beck. 
there you go. I was a very qualified boxer when I was younger. I'm a regional medalist and I have a bronze medal. Hooray, you made it to the podium, Johnny Beck. Pleasure to have you here. Fantastic, great. Hatam says swimming, great. Volleyball, right, that's another popular one. The hammer throw, says Marcus. I was watching the hammer the other day. Um, can't remember who won. I think it was Poland, right? Who won? Wasn't it? It was Poland against Finland. They were the two big ones. I think Poland won, but correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. And the marathon. She really likes the marathon. Brilliant. Now, Elan, you're like me. My favourite sport in Olympics is skateboarding. Since I discovered skateboarding, I've become a huge fan. And I was so chuffed. I was chuffed. <laughs> chuffed is, is a British term meaning happy, right? I was so chuffed um, because the British girl, 13-year-old, got the bronze medal. 13-year-old. I mean, I didn't even know 13-year-olds could compete in the Olympic Games. And the silver medal was a 12-year-old. What's going on? Well done, Japan, right, who got the gold. Um but yeah, clearly skateboarding is a very is a young people's sport. Very, very interesting. Right, lots of different sports there that we've talked about. Uh, excellent. Very exciting. Nail biting. I, I heard that all the time. When you listen to the commentary, I watch the BBC commentary. They're always saying, oh, another nail biting final. It kept coming up again and again. So it's a good it's a good expression, right? Let's talk about sports. Um, athletics uh, is 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 a really important one because athletics actually is not just running. I think that was my mistake. Athletics is not just running; it's running and throwing and jumping, <laughs> right? So athletics will include not only the races but also the long jump, the high jump the discus, the hammer. Um, so all of those, basically running, jumping, um, throwing, going too fast. Those are all kind of athletics. And that's the noun. Again, word families, the person is an athlete. Notice the stress, right? Athletics. I love athletics. It's a tricky one because it's athle, athle, le, and you stress the le. Athletics. Try. I love athletics. Or linking, I love athletics. Vath. Athletics. You're like, what? <laughs> athletics. I love athletics. It's just a voiced sound. It's a v. You can feel the sound here. V and th is not voiced. I love athletics. Athlete. The stress for the person changes to athlete. Athlete. I'm an athlete. She's a competitive athlete. Try that. She's a competitive athlete. Mm, good. Adjective athletic. She's very athletic. She's very athletic. So she's very, um, well, sporty, really, I guess. Athletic is this somebody who's sporty. Doesn't it's nothing to do with competition. So your, you know, your children can be athletic. Um, some children are very lethargic and maybe quite lazy. Other children are very athletic and sporty, right? So it means you like you like doing sport. Great. Now Olympic sports. Again, I'm just going to share this website with you. If you're unsure about the Olympic sports or you want to find out more. You can go to this website. It's the olympics.com. Hello. Surprise, surprise. Olympics.com. 
and you can find out everything you need to know about the Olympics, right? About the Olympic Games, the athletes is the people, about the sports, the news. And I was interested about the summer because obviously we have Winter Olympics here. You've got the Youth Olympic Games and you've got Paralympic Games. They've got different sports. Um, but just take a look at the variety, the variety of sports we've got. Right, basketball, archery, you've mentioned a lot of these. Artistic swimming. Oh, man, this I was watching the other day. Artistic swimming was unbelievable. The Russians, right? I saw the when there they they was a couple and they were doing spiders and it was absolutely amazing. Artistic swimming. Or they, sorry, they were synchronized swimmers. Artistic swimming. Synchronized swimming. I think it's the same thing. I'm by no means an expert. And don't worry, you don't have to be an expert either. Athletics, badminton, with that lovely spelling, um, boxing, hockey, judo. So you can find out here about all the different sports. Shooting, right? Skateboarding, look at that. Uh, sport climbing. I didn't know climbing was an Olympic sport either. Didn't know that. If you want to find out about the... Um, Olympic Winter Games, if you're interested, you can find out the sports there. Um, obviously, most of it focused around snow and ice. And interestingly, the, the Paralympic Games. So this is the games for the disabled people or people with impairments, some kind of impairment. Um, ah, I've not been here before. They haven't put the games up. Maybe it's a different website. Yes. Same website. OK, there's lots of information here. We're going to look at the Paralympics shortly. Um, but it's absolutely amazing. Really, really interesting. If you don't know much about it, stick with us. And you're about to find out more about it. Um, athletics. So we've talked about athletics. So I've got a, a little quiz for you. A little few questions or a quiz, if you like. Um, We've, there are lots of different kinds of sports, and you've told me that you're fond of football, hockey, archery, ooh, skateboarding. What about the categories? So if we put, for example, racing, running, jumping, throwing, that's athletics, right? What are the categories? I'm going to show you a question, and I'd like you to tell me what are the six category names of the events below right so you've got something and something and that's for the discus the 100 meters high jump long jump etc etc so these are just examples there's a lot more but what is the category something and something for example artistic pommel horse beam etc etc what's the category for that sport or event. We say sport or event. Right, take a look, write down your answer, and uh, I'm gonna have a drink. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of time to do this, and ha let's have some uh, Olympic <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> not that loud, Keith. Guarav, your question, which sport do I like most? I am I love the middle distance running, 800, 1500. Because when I was a, a youth, I, I used to run the 800 and I used to run the 1500. They were my best sports. I was a big fan. I loved, uh, I loved athletics and running. Right, let's, I'll just share some of your answers as you're going. Not necessarily correct, but let's see. Hmm. Hmm.
Interesting. Wankle, take care. See you soon. Interesting. Let's see any others. Number three. Ah. Uh huh. Yuko, you're on the ball. Still competition. Interesting. Number six. Ah. Right, okay. Ah. Tutor, sorry about that. <laughs> In my ears, he says. Oh, that's interesting. Equestrian. You're thinking of the horse. Ah, it's a different kind of horse. Video is lagging. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> Number four, martial arts. Ah. Right, okay. Interesting. So, some of these are very, very good. Um, let me knock that off. So the first one, right? Discus, 100 meters, high jump, long jump, all of that we would call track and field, right? Track and field. So, I mean, you're right, some of you, in that they're sports, but as a category, we call it track and field. So that includes all of the racing, all of the running, the discus, the hammer, right? And let me just, let's do, um, I'm just going to show you these because you may not know all of these. These may be cognates for some of you, but not for everybody. Not everybody will know them. Interesting. That is interesting. I'm, I'm looking, let me show you because I'm showing, I'm looking on the website. I want to get the picture of the athletics discus throw. Um, it's this one here. You can see, ah, oh, it's going to take me to, I don't want to go to watch the whole video. The image suddenly, <laughs> why do I get fish? Why do I get fish? Discus throw. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's this is the discus going back to ancient Greece in Athens where they used to throw the discus. So you've got the discus throw, you've got the hammer throw. Look at that in Scotland they've got the hammer throw. Fantastic. That's throwing the hammer. Um, you've also got something called the shot put. I think it's a shot put throw. Shot put. So they actually throw this heavy ball. So all of those are throwing right. So all of these racing, so these are field events, the high jump, the long jump, the hammer, the discus, these are field events. And the, the sprint, if you remember the sprint, middle distance, long distance, these are track events, track and field. Number two, you were right, gymnastics. A few of you had gymnastics. You've got artistic gymnastics, floor gymnastics, they call it as well, the pommel horse. <laughs> It's not a horse. The pommel horse is this. <clears throat> right? The pommel horse. Ever so proud because Britain won the male pommel horse competition. We did very, very well. So that's the pommel horse. And then you've got the beam in gymnastics. There's lots of kinds of beams, but the beam that they walk across, right? That's the beam in gymnastics. So you've got all of these were uh, artistic or floor. Sorry, they're all gymnastics, right? Artistic, floor gymnastics. Gymnastics covers the whole range of different kind of activities there. Number three, water sports. Or somebody said aquatic sports. Water or aquatic sports. Aqua, water, aquatic sports. 
So that included, um, whoops, that included swimming, canoeing, diving, all of those. Okay, Taekwondo, Taekwondo, wrestling, judo. So generally, these are actually called fighting sports. Now, somebody mentioned martial arts. Yes and no, because martial arts includes, I don't see boxing, it's not a martial art. Um, taekwondo, yes. Judo, yes. Karate, yes, martial arts. But wrestling, it's not a martial art. These are fighting sports, right? Martial arts would include, so judo, karate, um, taekwondo, jujitsu, all of those, right? Those would be martial arts. Okay, number five and six. So, right, I think you had this. Some of you talked about team sports or group sports. So these we would call team sports. Football, volleyball, right? They're teams. Hockey is, was the other one that a lot of people like. And the others, in contrast, the individual sports. Individual sports. Uh, you're shooting archery where you compete as an individual there's a lot of individual sports right but um contrasting to team sports and individual sports we could use these right okay there are other names that can be used here i'll just summarize these here yes you can use other words so we've got for example and just to share karen talks about beach sports so yes, I mean, volleyball, beach volleyball, surfing. Um, these would be, you could talk about beach sports. Um, any other sports, team sports, individual sports. Horse riding could be another category. Equest we call it equestrian sports. Um, so I can add maybe these as well. Equestrian Equestrian sports. Whoops. It's with an E, right? Equestrian sports. So this is with a horse. So again, within horse riding, there are different kinds of um, events, right? I think there's the horse, there's the jumping there's, oh, I can't remember the names, but there are different events, right, with horses, horse riding, so equestrian. We call that equestrian sports, yeah? Okay, excellent. There's probably more. There's probably more. Yes, good. Calmwell, good question. Can we discuss Olympic-related questions? Yes, because I realise <laughs> we've done a lot about vocabulary. <laughs> so let's move on. I want to move on to a question about the Olympics, right? because um, we've discussed vocabulary in detail, but let's move on and talk about the role of the Olympic Games, right? What is the role of the Olympic Games? Is it a waste of money? A lot of people say, you know, the money spent by countries on building the infrastructure, building the stadiums, the, the roads, the buildings, the hotels, the training camps, that money could be spent on hospitals, education, infrastructure for the city. I think this happened in uh, in Brazil, right? There was a lot of controversy about why they were spending so much money on the Olympic Games. Is it a waste of money or is there a bigger purpose behind the Olympic Games? Let me know. What do you think? The Olympic Games. Right, Nadja says, I don't think it's a waste of money. Okay. Oh, Mindwa Quat, well done. Congratulations. You got 8.5. Well done. Okay, Pradeep says, it's promoting the tourism sector. Good. 
that's true. The nog and yes, there are air sports. You're right. Uh, zero says it stimulates the economy. That's good. Ashraf says it costs an automatical. Oh, I think you mean astronomical. I think you mean astronomical. It costs an astronomical amount of money. Yes, true. Guarav says it's a big business. It is a big business. Um, oh, yes, you've got it there. Astronomical. Krishna, very good point, right? It is to bring out the fresh talent to the world, right? That's very, very good. Hien says boost the spirit for healthy lifestyles. There's a lot of interesting research about how the Olympics can motivate people to do sport. Surprisingly, it motivates people less than we think. Um, in fact, some in some countries it has the opposite effect. People actually end up watching the Olympics and not doing sport, and then after they forget and don't do sport at all. So there's a lot of controversy about that, right? That, I think that's an interesting expression because um, I, I realise I keep using it. <laughs> There's a lot of controversy about it, which means controversy just means um, debate, discussion. Let's call it heated debate. It's actually very, very, if it's controversial, then there's a lot of heated debate or discussion. There's a lot of controversy. Controversy. Nice word. Yes. Um, companies are sponsoring it. Yep, that's true. So it's there's, there's business and companies sponsoring it. It brings us relaxation. Yes, it certainly does. Watching it does. Yep, why do we need a lot of money? Very true. It does cost a, an astronomical amount. Yes. Um, attack tourists around the world. It does attract tourists except this year <laughs> because if you look at the stadium, there's nobody in there. So unfortunately, because of COVID, right, it hasn't really worked this year. Um, Dali says, in my opinion, the Olympics is not a waste of finances. Okay. Veal talks about long-term benefits. You can promote tourists, tourism, right? I think you say tourism is the sector. Promote tourism and investors, so people do invest, yes. Uh, Gopinath has a good point. Hosting the country, the sorry, the hosting country, lovely collocation. Hosting country is the centre of attraction of the world. Absolutely, fantastic. Very, very true. Okay, um, some very good ideas. Let me just build up a few phrases for you, right? Um, so the Olympics, I talk about they, the Olympics, right? They, because it's the Olympic Games, it's a plural. Um, you could use it. What role does Olympic Games play? Well, it helps. They help. You can it. You can use it or they. I'm going to say they. They help build international unity, friendship, understanding, empathy. Right? These are nice words. So the Olympic Games can help build unity, friendship, understanding. We can say foster. It's a nice word. To foster is to create, um, provide a good environment for something. So they help foster friendship, right, between countries. That's one of the ideas. Um, bringing people of different cultures together, it helps foster understanding across countries. So we can talk about that. We can use bridge. They help bridge. What do you bridge? You bridge a divide. You bridge a gap and you bridge differences. These are all great collocations, right? So the Olympics can help bridge. Bridge is connect the political div divide between countries. So some countries are politically divided. They disagree with each other. But when it's the Olympics, they come together 
with mutual mutual respect and com com competition. So the Olympics can can not always, but can bridge the political divide. Um, it can bridge the gap between different cultures, right? What we learn about Japan just watching the Olympics, we we learn an awful lot. I mean, the opening ceremony. I don't know what you thought, but I thought it was very interesting to see how the Japanese interpreted what's happening now, the Olympics. Um, I thought it was very interesting, right? To bridge the gap between different cultures, bridge the differences between people. That's what sport does, right? When you're on the field, it brings people together. So we've got some nice verbs, right? You can build things, you can foster, you can bridge. You could say all of these with the Olympic Games. They're nice. Um, yes, great. Rahul says they help build courage and equality. Nice. Lovely, great. Also, we can go on and we can say they inspire. It, some people talked about inspiration. They inspire young people to be the best they can. So be the best. Excel is to do very, very well, right? So excel is to do very well, to excel in their field. And as you said, to practice more sport. So maybe, you know, you watch the, uh, the young teenagers on the skateboard. And if you're a teenager, that can inspire you to say, well, me too. I can do that. And I'm going to practice more sport. Absolutely. However, however, there is the other side, right, of the argument. The money spent on infrastructure. So we're talking about the, the stadiums the roads, hotels, right, could be better spent on schools, hospitals, etc, etc. Could be better spent. Could be better spent. That's a nice expression, I think. Could be better spent. Could be put to better use. That money could be put to better use. We could build um, some schools or some hospitals, for example. Okay. Yes. Very good. Excellent. Good. Right. Listen, I'm going to move on. I've noticed the time. Gosh. I'm going to move on just to show you one thing here. Um, if you want to watch some great programs about the Olympics, this, I discovered this um, TV channel. It's on the Olympic website. But guys, it's olympic.com live. Um, and it's not only coverage of the Olympics, but they've got documentaries. They've got films. They've got the, the behind the scenes at the Olympics. What's the, the mission? What do they try to do? And it has some absolutely fantastic stuff here. Um Documentaries about different sports and the origin behind the sport. It's really interesting. I mean, we're not going to watch it now, um, but just to let you know about that, it's the Olympics.com live, and you can basically go in there and you can watch all sorts of stuff, all sorts of interesting documentaries um, about, basically, about the games, about the Olympic Games. All sorts of stuff. Go and check it out. Right now, um, I'm going to shift gear <laughs> um, and show you something different. I'm going to show you this one over here. <laughs> Come back. The toolbox. Excellent. Thank you very much. The toolbox. Um, here, I'm going to share with you very quickly a tool that can help you with your learning, right? Now, this is called Bokaroo. So I encourage a lot of students 
to record their voice, right? And to listen back. So for example, you can take some of the expressions today, you can record them and have them as a record and just listen back. And it helps you absorb the language to really get the language deeper. If you're practicing IELTS answers, record yourself, listen back, listen to your fluency, listen for mistakes, right? It's really useful. Of course, you can use a phone for that. But if you're on your computer, this website is really, really simple, right? And it's a really, really easy way. Oh, sorry. Really, really easy way of doing it. It's called bokaroo.com. You may know this. Um, if you don't, I'm just going to share it with you very, very briefly. It's super simple. And this is why I like it, because it's incredibly simple. Basically, you go there. You All you do is you connect your microphone, press the button, and it starts recording. And it starts saying what you've got. And you can record up to about 1 minute 30 seconds, I think. Um, you can pause. And then you can resume and carry on, or you can just stop. Let's see if my mic's... I'm not sure if my microphone's connected. The button. And it starts recording. And it starts saying what you've got. And you can record up to about 1 minute 30 seconds, I think. Um, you can, And then you can resume and carry on, or you can just... <laughs> and that's it. Great. And you can also save it and share it. You have to then... You can get the link if you want to send that to your teacher or send it to some friends. So listen to what I've recorded. Um, you can download it if you want to keep a copy. So I download that into my computer. Um, or you can just delete it. I'm going to delete it. Permanent delete this audio. Absolutely fantastic. I just think it's so useful um, to keep your own recordings, to send them to your friends or teachers. Um, it's really practical. It's so clean. It's like Google. It's super clean and simple. Um, you know, I do recommend it. It's called Vocaroo, V-O-C-A-R-O-O, Vocaroo.com. Go and check it out. Really simple, but I think really useful. Lovely. From that, let me move on. Oh, now I'm looking at time. I'm going to mention briefly the Paralympics because I think we can't visit the Olympics without mentioning the Paralympics. The Paralympics, did you know, was officially founded in 1989 in Germany. Um, actually, it goes back to the Second World War. At the end of the Second World War, one of the it was one of the British um, military guys, I think a lieutenant, who wanted to set up an opportunity for the soldiers coming back with disabilities, maybe they've lost an arm or they've lost a leg or they've got a, a sight impairment, to give them an opportunity to do sports together and to compete and to promote you know, sport amongst people with disabilities. And so this, the Paralympics was set up officially. It began in 1989, but it had been going for many years. The Paralympics, if you've not heard of this, basically... I think their goal, my understanding, is to raise awareness of people with disabilities. So we talk about people with disabilities, right? So people maybe who have lost an arm, lost a leg, maybe they cannot see as well, or maybe they're partially deaf. Impairments is some kind of disability, if you like. Um, so a, a sight impairment means you cannot see so well. Uh, a walking impairment, you cannot walk so well. Maybe there's a problem with the leg. So the, these are both, I think, very, very important words to, to know, not just for the Paralympics, but in life generally, right? Um, and they offer, the they offer disabled people the chance to compete is the other one. Remember that? We talked about compete, the chance to compete. But also the Paralympics want to challenge the boundaries set by society. And of course, the boundaries set by society are that many years ago, if you've lost a leg, I'm sorry, you can't compete. Just watch the Olympics. And obviously that's not good enough. And so the Paralympics said, well, no, let's challenge that. 
let's create the opportunity for disabled people to compete. So this is what the Paralympics stood, did. Um, it's for people with underlying health conditions. So again, disabilities, underlying health conditions, this is what they identify as how people can compete. You need to have some kind of visual impairment or impaired muscle power or amputee, which means you've lost a hand or you've lost a leg, or some restricted movements of joints. The joint is like the, the elbow joint, the wrist joint, the finger joint. This is your joint, right? It's, the, it's where the bone moves. So all of these are the underlying health conditions that have um, basically helped grow, sorry, that are necessary or in order to qualify in the Paralympics, you need to have one of these conditions. Okay. If you want to learn more about the Paralympics, go and check out paralympic.org. Um, it's really interesting. Seriously, I just think it's, I mean, it's, it doesn't get as much attention, but when the Olympics finish, the Paralympics follow straight away. So in the next two weeks, you're going to see the Paralympics in Tokyo. And it's full of, obviously, like the Olympics, it's full of inspiration. It's full of interest. Um, it's really amazing some of the sports that they've created and the opportunities that they've created. Go and check it out. International Paralympic Committee. I think it's well worth having a look at. Okay. For me right now, I said, right, visualization. So I'm going to move on and do a visualization with you because um, we've been looking at all sorts of stuff, right? We've been looking at <clears throat> vocabulary a lot. <laughs> um, we've talked about the role of the Olympics and whether it's a waste of money or what are the benefits of the Olympics. Um, toolbox was Vokaroo. And I wanted to mention the Paralympics to raise your awareness about that for disabled people. Visualization. So the last week or two, I've missed visualizations, but I want to bring one back. A visualization basically is uh, is where I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Ooh, <laughs> strange. Close your eyes and just relax. And all you have to do is listen to me and just let the words flow over your body. <clears throat> if I tell you to look at something, you look in your mind, right? Don't open your eyes, just look in your mind. If I tell you or ask you a question, what are you feeling? Just think about the question. We're going to look at all the vocabulary for the Olympics, right? In the visualization. This is the point. It helps you relax, but it helps you also absorb the vocabulary in a very open, relaxed way, right? Um, this is not for everybody, but some people really enjoy it. <clears throat> I think it can it can help you relax because because IELTS preparation is really stressful, right? It can be a lot of stress. I see so many people saying, oh, I'm fed up. I'm finished with IELTS. I give up. It's too much. I'm just, I'm forgetting all the words. I can't remember things I'm learning. I know it's really, really difficult. This, I hope, can help for the next five minutes, right? Ty a chance just to relax for five minutes. I suggest you sit because if you lie down, you'll fall asleep. <laughs> but just sit. If you can, sit up straight. I mean, don't slouch, right? If possible, just sit up. Sit up straight, but relaxed, right? <clears throat> just get in the mood. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to talk you through and just listen and follow me. It's all you have to do, right? Easy peasy. So... <clears throat> That was clever. Are you ready? You're ready. I think you're ready. Okay. Brilliant. Guys, let's begin. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> let's do it. So today, you're going to travel to the Olympics. And it's going to be very exciting. But to begin, I'd like to begin 
with a little warm-up. So first of all, close your eyes and just relax your shoulders, your arms, your legs and your feet. Breathe slowly in and slowly out. And as you breathe in and out, just notice your breath. Don't try to change it or speed it up. Just let it happen. As you let the breathing happen, you can count one as you breathe in and two as you breathe out. And just relax into your breathing. Next, keep your eyes closed and in your mind, I'm taking you to the Olympic Stadium. We're going indoors to watch the gymnastics. As you walk through the entrance, what can you hear? You walk over to your seat there are not too many people in the stadium and you sit down and relax. You're thrilled to bits to be here watching this gymnastics competition. There are different activities going on. There's a woman doing artistic gymnastics. There's a man on the pommel horse, another on the rings. The atmosphere is electric and you can hear cheering with every jump. It seems to be a competitive sport. As you watch, feel your breath going in and out. But now suddenly something strange is happening. And as you look around, you find yourself in the middle of the floor. Suddenly, it's you. You are competing. You are a competitor. You've been through the heats and the qualifying rounds, and now you are in the final of the floor gymnastics. How does that feel? It's time to get ready. You're stretching your body. You're breathing deeply. You're preparing to perform. Adrenaline is pumping through your body. But listen, you've got this. You can do this. You're going to make it to the podium. You're going to become an Olympic medalist. All you need is to believe in yourself. So you breathe deeply, you're mentally prepared and just before you begin, that's strange, your coach is calling you over and he's whispering in your ear, it's time to come back, come back to class. When I count three, Come back to class. One, two, and three. Open your eyes and welcome back. <laughs> welcome back indeed. How did that feel? <clears throat> so, who knows, maybe you will become the Olympic gymnastic champion in the future. I hope that can help you relax. <laughs> Some of you are probably a bit anxious about suddenly you have to perform, but it's just about relaxing and listening to all of the language, the vocabulary, 
all of the words. Go back and listen again. Sometimes, in fact, all of the time, the more relaxed you are, the better you learn. It's as simple as that. So I hope the visualizations can help you with that. <laughs> Great. Fiona says, that was too good. Kalpana says, really therapeutic. Right. Very wonderful. <laughs> it's amazing. Great. Good. Glad that you like it. I want to sleep. <laughs> Hang. Don't go to sleep. Not just yet. Not just yet. Yeah, quite a few of you want to sleep. Anchor, I was about to win gold and you called me back. Ha ha ha. Very good. Sorry to sorry to disturb your gold medal. Sorry to stop you going to the podium. Never mind. You can go to the podium in Kahoot later on. Excellent. So I'm going to switch um, because we've been looking there at the visualization. You've been listening, feeling, relaxing. I'm going to move on and have a, a little look at idioms just before we finish with Kahoot. So idioms. There are different idioms we can use with sport and with the Olympics. I've picked out one or two. Please feel free to share any others that you have. Um, but I have these that I picked out. The first one is to be the underdog. And this is great, right? The underdog. Why do we say underdog and not under cat or under fish? I don't know. Underdog. What does that mean? It means basically it's the team or the person that is not expected to win. So in a competition, you've always got the favourite, right? So the person you expect to win is the favourite, right? Um, the favourite, it doesn't mean favourite. It's a different American spelling. It's the British spelling. The favourite is the person who is expected to win, right? Nothing to be, nothing. It's a different meaning from my favourite food, right? Not the one I like most. But the person you expect to win is called the favourite. The opposite is the underdog. For example, some people say Elaine Thompson um, was the underdog, but in the end, she actually won the 100 metres, breaking the world record, right? So nobody expected Elaine Thompson to win. Um, they all thought her Jamaican colleague was going to win. But so she was the underdog. But in the end, she won and surprised everybody. So the under, underdog is the person not expected to win. Really good expression. Notice it's not the under cat. It's the underdog. Great. Blue, blow the competition away. Um, you probably know the expression because I've taught it before. To blow, It blows me away, right? It blows me away means it's very impressive. But this is a different meaning, right? This is a different meaning. She blew the competition away means that she was much better than the rest. Elaine, Tem Elaine Thompson blew the competition away. She destroyed the competition. It's like, you know, if you imagine you're, you're, you're running a race and here's you and here's the competition and you're running and you're... And you blow the competition away. You just destroy the competition. Oh, that's me. Yes. But you're running and you destroy the competition. You blew or you blow the competition away. It's a really common expression. When you're listening, if you're listening to the Olympics in English, I know you're probably not, um, but you will hear that expression a lot. She blew the competition away, right? She was much better than the rest. And she probably won. To give it your best shot is to do your best. Again, this is used not only in sport, but in other fields. So if you're doing a piece of work or a project at work, you can say, I'm going to give it my best shot. If you're going to take the IELTS test, you say, I'm going to give it my best shot. In, in, the, in the Olympics, a lot of athletes will say, right, I'm in the... I'm in the fight. No, I'm in the heat. I'm the underdog, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Okay. 
a curveball, to throw a curveball. Um, so normally, if you think of a ball, if you think of a ball, that's not a ball, but that'll do, right? When you throw a ball, balls go straight, right? Of course they do. They go straight like that. Anything you throw goes straight. But if you throw something and it goes ooh in a curve, that's unusual. That makes you go, what? That's a bit strange. So when you throw a curve ball, it's basically surprising somebody with a situation or maybe a problem, right? So I, I went to this meeting the other day. I had my, prep, my presentation prepared. Um, I was going to use... Uh, I was actually going to use a PowerPoint. When I arrived, the host said, I'm sorry, the projector's broken. That threw me a curveball. It like, phew, it's like, oh, that's a surprise. What do I do now? It was a surprising situation. Um, so I just had to speak without the PowerPoint. So to throw a curveball is to surprise someone uh, with a situation or a problem. For example, Again, British athletes. I'm choosing all the British athletes. Sorry. When Dina Asher-Smith didn't qualify for the final, that was a big surprise because everybody thought she was the world champion, that surely she's going to qualify. When she didn't qualify for the final, that really threw us a curveball, right? It really surprised us. That's the curveball. Another one, neck and neck. To be neck and neck, again, you'll see this in the Olympics, in the uh, in the track events, the sprint, especially the sprints, the 100 meter, the 200 meters, the athletes are often neck and neck. So they're equal, right? They're in a race, they're going together, neck and neck, they're absolutely together. For example, they were neck and neck right up until the finishing line. And then it was a photo finish. They take a photo to see because it was so close, right? They were neck and neck right up until the finishing line. Neck and neck. Great. Guys, that's it. Those are my idioms. Let me just check in with you. <clears throat> you are blowing the competition away. Great. Right, Hannah, this is great. He was expected to be to be the underdog, but he threw a curveball when he broke the 100 meters record. Yes. Let me just add to B. In fact, we'll leave that when breaking. He was expected to be the underdog, but he threw a curveball when breaking the 100 meters record. Lovely. That is a really nice example. I like it. Thanks for that. Great. <laughs> Joe says, my best friend or boyfriend, best friend or boyfriend, cheated on me. That really threw us a curveball. Yes. Now here, because it's you, you can change that. You can change the, the us, the we, the me. You can change it to me. That really threw me a curveball, right? Well, and what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Sajam, this is lovely. My friends think I am an underdog in learning English, but I will give it my best shot. I will give my best shot. Yes. Brilliant. Just notice underdog because it's a uh, you an, an, an underdog. I'm an underdog in learning English, but I will give my best shot. Lovely. We can also say I will give it my best shot, but that's fine. Brilliant. I enjoy the throw me. Right. I enjoy what you would say here is I enjoy people throwing me a curveball. I enjoy people throwing me a curveball. I enjoy people surprising me, right? Excellent. Nice, Roro. Really good. Listen, brilliant. Some nice um, idioms and some nice practice there. 
I'm going to move on next to our last activity for today. And I'm sorry I've kept you so long. It's gone on a bit long today. But we're going to do a review and we're going to do that with Kahoot. And if you've not used Kahoot before, you're going to need to go with me to this place. Let me just switch camera, right? Uh, we're going to review some of the vocabulary today. I'm going to test you and you give it your best shot and we'll see how we do. Go to this website. You need two browsers. Stay with me, but on your browser or if you've got a phone, you can download the app. There's a Kahoot app or just go to www.kahoot.it. We're going to play a game. It's really simple. It's really fun. Just give me a moment to set it up. Kahoot.com. Mr. Keith, you really threw me a curveball, <laughs> did I? Good. It's good to surprise you. Women, no, this is good. People often think women are the underdog. In business, in life, it's true. Yeah. And then they often win. Good for them. So here we are. We've got the Olympics. Let me just find out. Both players were neck and neck, but one of them threw us a curveball. Lovely, nice, the key. So you need to go to www.kahoot.it. Put in your name and then you're going to need the pin, right? Now, the pin is just loading up at the moment. Yeah, the pin is on its way. One moment. There's your pin six eight nine one two two zero. Six eight nine one two two zero. Got a bit of music. Put in your name and we'll just let you get in. If you can't get in, don't worry, you can just put your answer in the comments in the chat box and I will still see some of them. I don't see all of your comments because there are too many so I'm sorry I can't answer everybody but I just do try and pick out one or two. Maria says Greece is on fire. <laughs> nice. Idiomatically of course. Claudia says I will do my best shot in Kahoot. Lovely. Very good. So six eight nine one two two zero. Oh. Daniel Turnip. Oh, I'm I'm very happy about that. You now love English. Great. That makes me very happy. <laughs> Brilliant. Let's turn this off. Let's just make it a bit smaller. Okay. <laughs> yes. Let's see who's in there. Okay. Let's start. Given the time, let's go straight in and start. The Olympics. Well, gymnastics is a very blank sport. Gymnastics is a very blank sport. Compete, competitor, competition, or competitive. You've got thirty seconds. Remember, you can always put your answer in the chat box. So, Karen, just go into the chat box. You can write your answer. Wow, fantastic. 168 got that right. It was competitive. Remember the pronunciation. Gymnastics is a very competitive sport. Well done. I'm impressed. Be careful. 39 people said compete, but that's the verb, right? You need the adjective. Good. Let's see who was up there. Heaven was at the top. Nice. Hubaba second. Let's move on to question number two. That was the fastest he has ever run. It's a blank best. Person, personal, people, personify. <laughs> the fastest he's ever run. It's a blank best.
Harry, your heaven. Hey, well done. You're up there. Well done, Arda. Lena, well done. David, well done. Ooh, that's even better. 151 people got personal best. A PB personal best. Absolutely. The others exist, but not in this collocation. So that's your collocation. A personal best. Well done. Let's see who's up there. Heaven, which I think is Harry, I've just been told, is at the top. Ohms, without any vowels. <laughs> and then Kevin is number three. Okay, let's move on. Question number three. <clears throat> he was blank for taking drugs during the competition. Unqualified, disqualified, anti-qualified, non-qualified. He was blank for taking drugs during the competition. I know, controversial example, I know. <clears throat> well done, Ibuke. Well done, Levzen. Void, well done. Oh, we're getting better and better. 176 people got disqualified. Well done. 42 fell into the, fell into the trap of unqualified, which of course exists but it means you don't have the qualification to do something, right? I'm not qualified to fly an aeroplane. <laughs> I'm learning fast. Disqualified means kicked out of a competition. Let's see. Heaven, number one. And nothing has really changed except the running hippo <laughs> has joined us. Love it. Last question, guys. She won the race even though she was the blank. Under cat, under mouse, under elephant, underdog. <laughs> A nice picture of David and Goliath there. David, of course, was the... Uh, uh -uh. <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. Ah, <laughs> what happened? Wow, you're getting even better step by step. 190 people got the underdog. Perfect. I know we've just studied it, but even so, well done. Absolutely brilliant. So let's find out. Did you make it to the podium? Here we go. Number three with a bronze medal goes to Oms. The silver medal goes to Kevin and the gold goes to Heaven. Well done, Harry. Well done, Heaven. Number one gold medal on the podium. You're a medalist. You're an Olympian. Well done, my friend. <laughs> Congrats. Very, very, very nice. Excellent. That's it. Well, listen, we've been through a lot today, right? We've covered a lot of vocabulary, expressions, idioms, visualizations. You can always go back and listen to some of this stuff again. Do remember, um, you can check me out on Facebook, Facebook page. Um, go and check out the website if you don't, if you haven't done already, the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, you can find out lots of materials and resources. The, the notes from today, um, was, so you can go and download those and get those as well. If you've liked the live lesson and if you want to study more with me, um, you can go and check out the IELTS Speaking Success. Um, it's on, uh, well, it's in different places. It's in Udemy or it's in Teachable uh, on my website. You can go and find it. Um, if you go into my website, you can get it straight away just by clicking over here, let me show you. If you go into the Keith Speaking Academy, let me take those off. Ba -bum, ba -bum. For example, go straight into the study with me and click there and you would go straight to the course. You can find out all about it. Um, there's information, what you get, who it's for, the whole curriculum. You can see there's some new questions here for the latest questions that are appearing. So there's lots of stuff there. You can go and check it out if you're interested. If it's right for you at the moment, go and check it out. 
if it's not absolutely fine. There's lots of stuff on the website you can find as well. So go and check it out. That's me, IELTS Speaking Success, get a band seven plus. Um, to let you know on Saturday, I've got a recorded video and Saturday's video is an interesting one. It's common mistakes people make in IELTS speaking. So I'm going to show you not only grammar mistakes, but also communication mistakes that lots of students make in their IELTS speaking test. You need to avoid these mistakes. Uh, I'm going to show you what they are, how to avoid them on Saturday. So check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, so make sure, in fact, that you do subscribe and turn on notifications, <laughs> which is here somewhere. Notifications, where are you? There we are. I've got so many things popping up on my screen. That's on Saturday. Another piece of news is next week I'm going on holiday. And you're like, what, again? No. Last week I just had a couple of days off. Next week I'm taking the whole week off. So I will not be around next week. Um, I'm disappearing up into the mountains. So there's no live lesson next week. OK, just to let you know. Let me put that up where it's very, very clear. Um, let me just show you. OK, no live lesson next week because I am on holiday. I'm on holiday. <laughs> but the week after, yes, the week after we will have a live lesson again as normal. OK, so that's it. Listen, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, it has been a pleasure. It's been fun. I hope you've learned a lot about the Olympics. Um, wow, you've been here for two hours. If you've been here all the time and you're still here, then listen, well done. Hats off to you. Absolutely fantastic. I hope your country does well in the Olympics. Check out the Paralympics. It's really worth watching. Have a great day. Thanks for all your messages, guys, and I will see you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. Drink time. Cheerio.